Hey everyone, Dave here again with AI Kitchen and today we're going to be creating a brand new recipe using ChatGPT and artificial intelligence. And today we've decided to do it based on the upcoming HHN event, Halloween Horror Nights event at Universal Studios. Because why not? On this channel, we can ask ChatGPT to create recipes based on anything. So you see in the background, I've got the little trailer going for Halloween Horror Nights that Universal released. But let's pull up ChatGPT and let's try to see if it can create for us a recipe be based on an event at Universal Studios. I always like uh, pushing the limits with ChatGPT to try to see what it can come up with. Please create a delicious, how do you spell delicious? How about tasty, because I can't spell it ever. And unique dinner recipe based on the Halloween Horror Nights event at Universal Studios. Let's see what it comes up with today. Haunted Horror Nights Feast. Inspired by the Halloween Horror Nights event at Universal Studios, this recipe captures the spooky and thrilling essence of the event while being delectably delightful. I'm looking over at my screen over here, even though you see it over here, ignore that. Uh, for your dinner guest. Oh my gosh, it's multiple things. Oh man, this might have to be multiple videos, guys. <laughs> That's okay, that'll be fun. Let me move this over here so I can see it better. There, now it looks like I'm looking at it. Uh, okay, so first, zombie finger breadsticks, a package of ready-to-bake breadsticks, almonds for fingernails, marinara sauce for dipping, bloody effect olive oil, garlic powder, mummy-wrapped meatloaf, mummy-wrapped, that sounds kind of good, and blood-red velvet cake with ghostly cream cheese frosting. Wow. So it's given us three recipes, a, oh man, but do I really want to make a cake? I've made a cake on this channel before. It's so, here, I'm going to ask it, uh, give me a non- cake dessert instead because i've made too many cakes on here absolutely let's switch it out for something different but equally as thematic pumpkin ghoul pudding parfait see look how cool is that guys we literally just got it to give us three different recipes pumpkin puree oh i'm excited i'm excited about this so again i'm not a professional chef guys but on this channel we always like to create and innovate and try new things and it looks like we're gonna do a little series here because that's what ChatGPT has determined is that we're doing a series. We're doing, oh my gosh, it's still going. Putting parfaits look like a lot of work. I just want you to know it's still typing out what to do. And I'll put the the whole list in the uh, the video. So, and yeah, this should be fun, guys. Let's see how it goes. All right, guys, we're here in the kitchen and I went shopping. I tried doing an online order. I went to Publix. I went to Aldi. I couldn't find the first ingredient that ChatGPT gave me for this Halloween Horror Nights feast that we're gonna cook. Uh, so here's what I did. I went back into ChatGPT and I think this is kind of the cool thing is we can just go ask it questions. We can ask the artificial intelligence questions on, you know, what can we do instead? So the first ingredient that it asked for was ready to bake breadsticks. Sticks. Since those don't seem to exist near me, I went back into ChatGPT and I said, I can't find ready to bake breadsticks near me. What should I do instead? ChatGPT says, if you can't find ready to make breadsticks, just make your own breadstick dough from scratch. It's quite straightforward. Here's a simple breadstick recipe you can use for the zombie finger breadsticks. So I went and got the ingredients for that and we're just gonna make the breadsticks from scratch. Pretty cool. It says first we need to take one packet of active dry yeast, which I've got here, and dump it into a bowl. Let me uh, open it. So that's what we'll do, we'll just dump it in here. That was so satisfying to dump in dry yeast for some reason. Small things thrill me, I don't know. So there we've got our active dry yeast. And then it, then it says to get one and a half cups of warm water. Actually, I did that all wrong. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> that's what we do on this channel, we do it wrong. Let me put that bowl aside and get another bowl. All right, so what I actually needed to do, and I guess I don't need this bowl, really. I could just use this giant measuring cup. You need a cup and a half of warm water and a tablespoon of sugar. Okay, and then you mix that in together until the sugar dissolves. Not, not devolves, dissolves. Come on, go ahead and dissolve. This is warm water. I always struggle between warm and hot. This is warm, in my opinion. Yeah, it looks pretty dissolved at this point. It's a tiny bit left. Once you've dissolved the sugar in the water, that's when you add the active dry yeast. So I kind of had that backwards. But that's only because I didn't read it at all. So now we're going to add the dry yeast, stir that in. And we're gonna let this sit for around 10 minutes till it becomes frothy. We're gonna get our zombie finger breadsticks the old fashioned way. I think that's better anyways, because you know what? If you have to go buy the pre-made breadsticks, it's kind of cheating. Now again, we're just gonna set this aside and we're gonna get our flour ready for the next step. Here's our bowl and we wanna put into it four cups of flour. This is number two, 
who does number two work for? I always say that. Three and four. I'm still kind of torn on whether or not I do like all of this in one video. I think doing the breadsticks and the meatloaf, you know, the appetizer and the main makes sense in one video. Maybe we'll do the dessert in a separate video. Only because I've made like 45 minute cooking videos and not many people watch 45 minute cooking videos. Seems like 12 to 15 is the way to go. All right, so we've got our flour in the bowl. It says to make a well in the center and dump the yeast water mixture into this after the 10 minutes. So we'll make a little well in the middle. That's where we're gonna dump in that yeast mixture. Like I said, in a few minutes, once that's all ready to go. I'm gonna take a look at the rest of the recipe while we wait. All right, so as I'm reading this recipe, it says we need to add a teaspoon of salt to this flour mixture. So I'm just gonna add a teaspoon of salt. We'll remake that little well I made. No big deal. This is why it's good to read the instructions ahead of time, but today it's just not, it's not happening for me. I'm trying to make my life difficult. So, but all right, at least I'm reading it. That's the important part. All right, the salt's mixed in. We're gonna pour the yeast in there soon, but we also are gonna pour the olive oil in and it's gonna be two tablespoons. So you can get that ready as well. Okay, so it's been like 10 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and say that this looks frothy. I'll mix it up a little bit. It's gonna get dumped into this flour mixture and hopefully we're gonna have some excellent breadsticks here really soon. So it says to mix this up a little bit. Try not to spill it on my laptop. Maybe I'll move that over and I think, was there anything else we need to add to this? Hold on, let me go down. On ChatGPT it says, da, da, da. stir with a wooden spoon until dough begins to come together, then turn it out onto a floured surface and knead it. So let's do that. I got that Taylor Swift song stuck in my head, guys. It's me, yeah, I'm the problem, it's me. Do you sing when you cook? I like to put on music usually, but I don't know. Maybe I'm weird. All right, let's bring the flour over here, put some on the surface. And I don't know, this doesn't really look like it came together that much. Am I missing an ingredient? Maybe it's just, you know, once I knead it, it will do what it needs to do. Knead it to get the kneaded effect. <laughs> it's early guys, my jokes aren't really top notch yet. Although they never really are. This is kneading it, right? I mean, just kind of using your hands. It says to do this for like five minutes. So that's what we're gonna do. Oh, it's kind of stiff dough. I feel like it should be more loose. I figured out why, guys. I forgot the stupid olive oil. <laughs> ah. I wonder if it's too late. We're gonna add it now. One. Oh gosh, I think it's too late. I think I failed. I think I failed. Did I fail, guys? Oh my gosh. Let's see if we can get it integrated in. That was a big fail from me. It might still be okay. It might still go in there, but I really think it was supposed to go in right at the beginning. Like right when I added the yeast, so it could get like all into the flour, but I don't really know all the science of baking. So we're hoping that this will work. Always with me guys, always you can expect a fail. So here's something maybe I didn't make clear. This is a cooking channel where a normal guy just tries to cook dinner, right? Well, not always dinner, sometimes breakfast. Just tries to cook a meal, maybe for his family. I do have one of those. They do like food. But every now and then, since I'm not a professional cook, no training, nothing like that. I mean, high school home ec, does that count? Not really. We, I mean, I remember one of the, uh, the classes I had in high school home ec, we made s'mores. <laughs> so I don't know if I learned any super uh, useful cooking techniques in that class. But anyways, we've added the olive oil. Maybe it'll get integrated. I don't know. We're gonna need this for like five minutes and uh, just really hope that it works out. <laughs> it still could, guys, it still could. I'll be back in a few. I don't know about you guys, but when it comes to kneading dough, I do the absolute shortest time stated. So on this recipe, it says five to seven minutes. So you know I'm sitting here staring at that clock and exactly when five minutes happens, I'm done. <laughs> Cause I do not like doing this. There it is, boom, we did it. Okay, I need a greased bowl. I don't know if I wanna reuse this one, I should. All right, so I did a good thing. I washed my bowl. Now we're gonna just put a little olive oil into the bowl like so. And then we're just going to put the oil all around the inside so the bowl, or so the dough does not stick. Grab the dough, make it into a ball, plop it in there. Cover it and put it in a warm place, it says. I'm gonna put it outside cause like 85 out there. All right, so our zombie finger bread sticks are in process, right? We've got the dough rising. So we'll have that, you know, soon. In this video, we'll definitely finish those out. We're also gonna make the mummy wrapped meatloaf, which sounds pretty good. It almost sounds like a mixture of meatloaf and um, what is that Gordon Ramsay dish that he always 
talks about on his show, uh, Hex Kitchen, Beef Wellington. It's like a Beef Wellington kind of mixed with meatloaf. Now to start off, we do need, what's it say? Quarter cup of diced onions, quarter cup of diced bell pepper. So I'm gonna go ahead and dice the bell pepper and the onion. And I did wanna kind of give some context because I think for a lot of people, they'll be like, they'll ask themselves, self, why is he making a video about Halloween horror nights? What the heck does that mean? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, it, I live in Florida. Not only do I live in Florida, but I'm a season pass holder to Universal Studios, Florida, which is a theme park in Orlando. <laughs> Every year they do something called Halloween Horror Nights where it's like, you know, haunted houses, things like that. And you go over there and it's like a tradition, right? You go over there and you get scared. <laughs> and right now it's about to spin up as I make this video. That's all starting in like a week and a half. I just put my finger under the knife. That would have been my own little uh, Dave Horror Fest. <laughs> If I cut my finger off in the video, I only need a quarter cup and I think I'm probably already beyond that. Let me see. And so I'm excited about it. I'm actually going to like a taste of Halloween Horror Nights this Saturday where you get to try all the foods at Universal. And so all that just inspired me to say, hey, why don't I make my own recipes based on Halloween Horror Nights using ChatGPT to figure out what we're going to cook. And that's what we're doing. So I just wanted to give you some context on why we're doing it. And you know what, if they come out good, we can all come back once a year and re-watch these videos and maybe make them ourselves to celebrate the new season of Halloween Horror Nights. Okay, so anyways, quarter cup diced bell peppers. We also need some onion diced up, and I think it's similarly a quarter cup, so not much. And don't judge my onion cutting. We're done doing that, guys. We've all moved past making fun of how poorly I cut onions and other things. We're just gonna accept that I'm not that good. I got a funny comment on uh, my last video <laughs> of someone who's probably good at cooking. They said, oh, cute. <laughs> Cute is like the ultimate diss, like, ah, uh, this, this is cute. <laughs> My kids use it all the time now, you know, so. The commenter must be trendy. Every time someone does something like embarrassing, my kids say, oh, cute. And basically these whole videos, my kids qualify as all cute. And I think this is probably at least a quarter cup of onions. Actually, it looks like more. I'm gonna grab a bowl and I'm gonna go ahead and in that bowl, put the diced peppers and the onions, the quarter cup of onions. Not much onion or the bell pepper, but it's a little bit. And then I'll set this aside to clean. You know, I'm sure you could double or triple this recipe if you wanted to, and I was just thinking, oh, you just times everything by two. But I bet we could just ask ChatGPT and it would do it for us. I think I'll probably do that in a future video. Like I'll have it design a recipe and I'll say, hey, can you double the size of that recipe? And we'll see what it does. So make sure you subscribe if you wanna see how ChatGPT handles that. Anyways, we've got our onions and our diced green peppers in the bowl. We now wanna add our breadcrumbs and our beef and a whole bunch of other ingredients. Yeah, this seems, this seems safe. The whole thing is like broken. Hopefully there's nothing inside it. Let's take a look. Eh, it looks okay. So we want a half a cup of breadcrumbs. It's the easiest way to pour these out right over the bowl. This is smart. I'm gonna do it over here. So if I spill them, I inevitably will. They don't get into the recipe. There you go. Half a cup of breadcrumbs. The recipe calls for one pound of ground beef. Does this just like pop open or do I need to use a knife? I had something exciting happen this morning when I woke up. You know, and it was exactly what I needed because these videos, they always go smoother if I record them at like 7 a.m. The only problem is at 7 a.m. sometimes you're tired and not motivated. All right, so let's add the pound of ground beef. Boom, perfect. And uh, this morning I was definitely having that struggle of just not really being ultra motivated to get up and cook. All right, we're gonna add an egg too. Do, do, do. And we're gonna add a quarter cup of ketchup to the mix. It sounds like meatloaf, doesn't it? That's what, exactly what it sounds like. But this morning I went onto my YouTube channel to see what day I last put out a video, trying to figure out how much of a rush this video was, trying to give myself an excuse to not record today. I also need to add salt and pepper to taste. Uh, but I saw my newest subscriber on this channel, and this won't be that exciting to everyone, but it's exciting to me, was T. Roy Cooks. T. Roy Cooks, guys, subscribe to this channel. Hi, T. Roy, if you're watching. Now, he might have just watched one video and liked it. I don't know if he's watching all the videos. We gotta add some pepper to this. And you may not know who T-Roy Cooks is, but T-Roy Cooks is someone I love watching on YouTube. He's definitely more in the like smoker grilling kind of category of YouTube, which I love that category too. And he does a bunch of smoked meats and things like that. We're gonna mix this all up now. I wish my bowl was a little bigger. I might just use my hands. Yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do. It's always the easiest way to do this. 
But yeah, so I was really excited because a YouTuber that I watch and I've watched for years subscribed to my cooking channel. And that was really exciting to me. So of course that's motivated me to do a T-Roy Cooks video. <laughs> like I did the Sam the Cooking Guy, who's another one I watch all the time. But I'm gonna have to go ask ChatGPT after I do this uh, universal Halloween Horror Nights thing to create a recipe based on T-Roy Cooks. And that I bet will be out in the smoker, which is always fun doing a recipe out in the smoker. It'll also give me an excuse to go clean my smoker, which I should have done like two weeks ago. All right, so this is all nice and mixed in. I probably could add a little more salt. I really didn't add much for the quantity of meat, but oh, this is so cold. Remember the ice bucket challenge where you'd have to like put your hands in the ice bucket? Or was that where you dumped the ice bucket on your head? There was some challenge where you put your hand in the ice bucket. I remember we did that one and uh, my daughter almost passed out. So don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. All right, let me wash my hands. All right, I've got to Google this. It says to shape the meatloaf to resemble a mummy's body. So I'm looking up a mummy's body here. I mean, this is, okay. So this could be fun. This could be fun. So what, should I spray this? Now I got stuff all over my hands. This what right here's what we call contaminating the Pam bottle with beef. I'm gonna have to wash the Pam bottle with soap now. Okay, so a mummy's body. It says an oval, like a mummy's body. So I'm just gonna kind of make it ovular. Ovular? Isn't that like a pregnancy thing? I don't know. <laughs> Ovulate. And then I'm gonna kind of make the feet like that. Does that kind of look like a sarcophagus in a sense? There's your, your mummy's body. Hey, that's not terrible. I think I just want this a little. I think it kind of looks like a mummy. Hold on, I'll show you in case you can't see it. I don't know if it's in the best spot. Let me put it under here. Does that kind of like, this is a head and then this is the feet. There's nothing on earth like the mummy. There, there's your mummy kind of look to it. Good, maybe, we'll see. Let me wash my hands one more time. All right, so we're gonna take our crescent rolls next. I think I'm gonna just put them out on this pan here. Roll out, well, no, I don't think I can do that. I think I'm gonna have to put it on the table. Push this down, I get some breadcrumbs on here. I don't really wanna get the breadcrumbs mixed into the crescent dough. Open crescent roll. So it says to just lay this flat on the table and then we're gonna cut it into strips. So let me just do that here. I have like a, ugh, that's not what I wanna do. There, this is what I wanna do. We're gonna cut it into strips like mummy, mummy cloth. So I think just basically like this, which may or may not work since it's like triangles. So this might not be the best way to do this. I probably should have followed the pre-designed angles on this dough. That would have probably been easier, but you know, they don't give me pictures when I use Chad GPT to design these recipes. So you just, sometimes you have to guess. All right, let's bring this bad boy back over here. And basically we're going to wrap this with the crescent dough like it's a mummy. It says to leave some space for the eyes. We can do that in a minute. Here, let's pull this over so you guys can see it. We're literally just wrapping this like a mummy. I'm doing it at an angle. I don't know if that's really what they intended, but that's what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of cool. It is kind of a cool idea from ChatGPT. I'm gonna give it credit where credit is due. This is a pretty cool recipe it's created. It's literally a mummy meatloaf. It's very Halloween-y. I should like hashtag Halloween in general, not just Halloween Horror Nights from Universal Studios. This is just a Halloween recipe. Spooky. Uh, hopefully it ends up looking okay. So I'm just gonna continue to wrap it with its mummy cloth like so. I'm gonna end up with like some wasted crescent dough. Yeah, I don't know why it excites me so much as uh, T-Roy Cooks followed me, but I think it's just cool to have someone you've watched for a long time just like recognize your existence. That's kind of cool to me. All right, that looks pretty mummyish. Let me do a little on the top here. So that definitely like motivated me this morning when I was like, oh, I'm so tired. I don't feel like cooking. I don't feel like recording. I don't feel like doing all that. But then T-Roy came in clutch, came in clutch, saved the video. Yeah, I am excited about this Feast of Terror at Halloween Horror Nights. I got a whole bunch of food that sounds really interesting. Okay, so that looks like a mummy. Does that look like a mummy? Kind of does. It kind of does. Do this thing. And then we're supposed to put little olives for eyes. Do I do that now or after it cooked? Olives for eyes. Boom. I like the other one second. I like this open side better. So I'm gonna cut another one in half. I don't really like olives, but I don't need to eat that part. It's just supposed to look cool. <laughs> the, the mummy's eyes are a little jacked up. Here we go. There's your mummy. Hey mummy. How you doing mummy? Oh, I gotta turn the oven on, dang it. Uh, what do we turn the oven on to? 375. Okay, so this is gonna go into the oven at 375 for how long? for 45 minutes until it's fully cooked. We'll pull it out when it's done and we'll have a mummy. It's pretty cool. It really is pretty cool. It 
kind of looks like a mummy. I don't know if my shaping was perfect, but I also didn't want like super narrow legs because then they would cook too much and be overcooked. I want it to be cooked evenly and taste good. That's kind of part of this too. Okay, I'm gonna clean up my work area a little bit while the oven heats up and the dough rises. Okay, so we're back. It has been an hour and our pizza dough or breadstick dough should be good to go. It looks like it's doubled in size. So we're gonna drop it out onto the counter here and we are just going to basically roll it out and I guess we could cut it if we want to. I think that's what I'm doing. I'm just gonna do like a big long roll and then we'll cut it into breadstick type forms or as best we can. We think like right here. Yeah, it seems like it could work. They need to be perfect. We can shape them a little after this, but this is our breadsticks that we are making and I have no idea if they're gonna come out good. I wish this knife was a little sharper because it's kind of struggling to get through friggin' dough, <laughs> which it shouldn't have that hard of a time doing. Whatever, we're gonna have to shape these for sure. They're way too long, first of all. This made a lot of dough. It really did double quite well. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't, you know? Just gotta hope for the best. All right, so let's say that's breadstick size, I don't know. I'm gonna do kind of this thing. We want it to look a bit like a finger. Here, let's put it on this uh, baking sheet, which might be slightly out of view for the camera to begin with. I don't really know, guys. This is why I don't have a bake shop. I'm gonna do it like this. I'm gonna do it like this and kind of roll it into pieces like that. I'm getting flour all over me. I'm trying to make them kind of look like fingers. That's kind of where I'm struggling, is I want them to be a finger, because that's the whole idea. It's a, is it a zombie finger or a mummy finger? I think it's a zombie finger. I'm trying to make them all similar size. They don't need to look perfect. I guess some will just be longer than the others. That's okay. What's your favorite uh, Halloween recipe? Do you have a specific recipe you cook every Halloween? Let me know in the comments down below. See, that helps my engagement if I ask important questions like that and learn a little bit about you guys. Yeah, these ones are definitely bigger, but I'm trying to make them the same thickness, so it won't really matter. Because you can have big zombie fingers and small zombie fingers. That's okay, that's acceptable. That's a really big one. I'm about to fill my cookie sheet. I, I guess I don't need to cook them all. I could save some of this dough for later. I don't really need 50 breadsticks this morning for breakfast. Although I wouldn't mind it, let's be serious. Gives me a lot of chances to get one that looks like a hand. I think I'm almost done. I think I'm gonna do one more and then stop. It'll be a smaller one. All right, so those are our zombie fingers. This I can save, I'll put it in a bag and I can make some fried dough or something later. My daughter would be excited. Maybe I should save more. I'm gonna save this long one too. I'm thinking ahead for dinner. All right, so here's what we got. We've got these zombie breadsticks that we're supposed to take almonds the Almond Brothers, and I, it didn't really say sliced or full almonds. It probably wanted full almonds, but I ordered sliced. I don't know. What would you have done? I didn't feel like full almonds would look enough like a fingernail, but now these sliced ones really don't look like a fingernail, so I might have failed. Actually, they do look like a fingernail. <laughs> That's cool. I want the bigger ones. Zombie fingers. That's pretty cool. All right, let me add all these little thumbnails or toenails or fingernails or whatever they are, and then we'll be back in a second. All right, so some of the fingernails look better than the others, as you can see. You can kind of see that there. Uh, what we're supposed to do next is brush it with olive oil and some garlic salt. So let me get the olive oil. Oh, dog's barking. All right, so here's some olive oil. I'm just gonna put it in a bowl so I don't go overboard. And then I'm gonna immediately go overboard on the first one. And we're just gonna put some olive oil on each of these little breadsticks, like so. Some of them look like fingers. Some of them look like, like big, weird, big toes. And some of them just look like nothing, but that's okay. These are our zombie breadsticks and we love them just the way they are. <laughs> Uh-oh, he lost his fingernail. Ooh, have you ever done that? Accidentally lost a fingernail? Like, you know, hit it with a hammer or something and then it falls off. Very painful. Would you guys have used a full almond or do you like this like little slivered almond plan that I had? I think these look a lot, like on some of them look a lot like fingers. So that's good. All right, and then we want to take our garlic powder and put that on there. Cause they are garlics, garlic bread, you know? So you want them to be garlicky. That's important. Molly, how'd you get inside? The door is not open, is it? My dog just magically got in the house and I don't know how. And these are gonna go into a preheated oven that's preheated to 375. If you guys want to get that set up. I mean, I'm always too late on telling you that part, but is that enough? I feel like I need to put a little more on these first couple. You can't really have too garlicky garlic bread, can you? I mean, just to taste this part. All right, I'm gonna call that done in the oven, 375 for I think 15 minutes, 12 to 15 minutes. So we'll let those cook and we will be back. And I'll be honest, I just checked, the uh, meatloaf also has 12 minutes. So they're both gonna finish at exactly the same time. We're pro cooks, guys. I'm really impressed with myself. Be right back. All right, guys, our, the first two parts of our Horror Nights feast are done. So first of all, 
we've got the zombie finger bread sticks. And you know what? I didn't do a great job uh, kind of making these, but the bad job I did still kind of made them look cool. See how it's like, I don't know. I feel like you could have made them without all the lines in them. But I don't know, it's kind of like fingers, right? They're not perfect. This one's a little more fingery, kind of, sort of. Can you see it? But yeah, so those are your zombie finger bread sticks. And then you've got the mummy I'll show it to you in this camera over here. The mummy meatloaf, which is pretty cool. It does remind me of a beef wellington, right? It's like kind of a, a beef wellington looking thing and it's shaped like a mummy, like in those little sarcophagus. So there's your mummy meatloaf. So let's see, how can I kind of display this a little bit better? I guess I'm gonna use this cake pan. Now don't forget, we still have the other part of this recipe, which is the pumpkin parfait ghost thingy, which is gonna be interesting. So make sure you watch that video next. And that video will probably be out next week or something. So let me put this on this other tray here. I feel like we need to put it in a nice display thing so we can show it off. All right, so there's the mummy meatloaf. Looks pretty good on this, I would say. And let's add some zombie finger breadsticks to it, to the plate. Does it make it not look like a, oh, this one lost his fingernail. Sad day, <laughs> that's cool. All right, so this, guys, is our Halloween Horror Nights Feast as designed by artificial intelligence. Wait, can I, can I do it like this? You got your mummy. Anyways, let's try it. Let's see how it tastes. See if it's a delicious recipe. I'm gonna dip the breadstick in marinara, cause why not? Hmm. Eh, <laughs> let me try another bite. It's good. It needs like, in my opinion, some garlic salt and some butter maybe. I don't know, just to really like step it up to that Pizza Hut level. You know, the precipice of good breadsticks is Pizza Hut. A little, I'm gonna add a little garlic salt and we'll see if I'm right. A lot of garlic salt. <laughs> yeah, I prefer that with the garlic salt. So maybe add a little garlic salt and a little garlic powder. Let's cut open our, uh, our mummy meatloaf and see what it looks like inside. Ooh, it sounds crispy. Hopefully it's cooked all the way through. Yeah, looks like it is. There you go. So there's your mummy meatloaf. It told me to cook it to 165, so that's what I did. Let's just cut off a slice here. I bet the bread's gonna make it extra good. I always like a good meatloaf anyways. Nothing really beats a breakfast meatloaf, because that's when I'm eating this, is breakfast time. Set this aside. Do you put ketchup on your meatloaf? I usually do, but I'm gonna eat this without ketchup. I really like the crust, the, cri the crispy crust on it. I think that's very good. The meatloaf is good too. I would say I've had a better meatloaf if you watch my world's best meatloaf recipe on this channel. I think that at its core is a better meatloaf. It has some more flavor in it, some extra spices. But what you could do is you could take that meatloaf recipe and wrap it in the crescent roller wrappers and put the eyes on it and make it into a mummy as well. And then you'd have like the best meatloaf plus the really good crust because that crust is really good on it. I love that part. I should give it a fair shot and try it with ketchup because that's normally how I eat my meatloaf. I know not everyone does, but that is how I like mine. I love it with ketchup. It's just so much better. So that's really good. So a mummy meatloaf. Let's see what ChatGPT had to say. It says, pair this feast, this Horror Nights feast, with a spooky themed drink of your choice. Maybe a blood red punch or a dark and stormy cocktail. Enjoy a Universal Studios inspired Halloween Horror Nights in the comfort of your own home. Well, I think it did pretty good. I think ChatGPT did a really good job on the theming. The taste was good. I think the breadsticks could be better. But then again, originally it asked us to use the pre-made ones, which would have been worse than this. So the ones we made from scratch, I guarantee are better than what we would have had. But we had zombie finger breadsticks. We had mummy wrapped meatloaf. I'd give the whole thing, again, we haven't had the dessert yet. That's in the next video. So that might up the score. But right now I'm gonna give it like a seven, low seven though, like 7.1, right? Because the breadsticks did not wow me. The, the meatloaf is great. I'd serve that. I'd have people come over. I'd make it exactly like this. Make it like a mummy and I'd serve it and it would be fun. Uh, the breadsticks, I would have to try to adjust because they're just a little boring. But anyways, again, butter, garlic, salt. I think that's the key. Maybe even some real chunks of garlic. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you subscribe. Tune in next time for the dessert for this Halloween Horror Nights themed feast. And we'll see you later.